you've been fighting some of the biggest battles of your life alone in this season. After a while, like my dad, you can start going crazy, coming to conclusions that are killing you. I know I'm on it. I can tell because nobody's making eye contact with me in the room right now. It's like, yeah, I totally do that. I totally do that. I, I come to a conclusion that is based in a belief. Remember what Elizabeth said to Mary in verse 45, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Isn't that amazing that it begins with belief, that behavior begins with belief? So why am I so good at creating worst-case scenarios? A lot of times the conclusion – I don't even say a lot of times. I'd say all the time. The conclusions that I come to are based in the belief that I start with. What I have to get better at doing is identifying where did those beliefs come from. John the Baptist was a, a mighty man, eccentric wardrobe, no doubt. I mean, y'all think I don't dress like a preacher. This guy running around with some, with some crazy belts. I mean, it wasn't just a fashion statement for him, though. He was representing something new. He was preparing the way for the new era, the kingdom of God. It's amazing, though, because when Elizabeth first reached Mary, and remember, Mary would have had to travel something like 50 miles to get to a relative. The first thing that she did when she found out she was pregnant with Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah who would save his people from their sins, was to get around someone else who was carrying something significant. And to do that, she had to go up the mountains. I was thinking about how she was going to elevation. Because she, anyway, I was just put it, putting that in there as a thing. But when she got there, an amazing thing happened because something inside of her knew. The, the, the thing that she was carrying, John the Baptist, which was to prepare the way for the Lord, knew that what she was in the presence of was significant. You know how you just know some things? You know how you just know some things deep down? Some of the things that you know are not true. I feel like I just flipped you in a jujitsu match. You were like, well, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Mm, some of the stuff you believe, God didn't say to begin with. I'm going to give you about 12 examples. About 12 examples. And I might throw in a 13. All right. Some of you believe this, but it's not true. You believe that who I am is what I do, and what I do is who I am. The reason I know you believe this is because I believe it every single Sunday I get up to preach. Do you know that I feel a lot of times like I'm only as good as my last sermon? And it's understandable I would feel that way because I grew up hearing things like, God wants to use you. And usually when you use something, that means it's a product. So I begin to think that God wants to use me like I might use this pulpit or like, like, I, might, like I might use a, a fork or like I might use a spoon. Since I believe deep down that I'm really just something that God wants to use, and I lose sight of the fact that before I was someone he wanted to use, I was someone that he loved. It is easy for me to jump to the conclusion. I hear you, Eddie. Eddie's saying jump, jump. But, but it's easy for me to jump to the conclusion that if I do not perform, that if I do not measure up to the expectation of performance, I do not have worth as a person. So what do you do when you lose the job that you had identified with? The conclusion that you come to is based on the belief that you start with. When we say things that sound Christian, but they're really not constructive, like, uh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. 
It's the word just that bothers me. If you don't believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and that all of your sins and your records, I know we live in cancel culture, but we, we forgot to talk about the most important thing that was canceled. The record of wrong that stood against me, that's what Christ canceled. That's what the cross canceled. That's what God canceled. But, but I'm just a sinner saved by grace. And see to you, that feels so true because you have so much proof. You got receipts. <laughs> I can show you my sin. I can show it to you. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. If that's what you start with, if you approach your father like a beggar, you will only ever be able to receive crumbs. You won't come boldly to the throne room if you believe, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. It sounds so humble. But deeper down, it leads us to look for God's judgment in places where he has promised us his grace. See, we are highly suspicious of the nature of a God who we secretly believe doesn't really like us. He loves you because Jesus is in your heart, but he really doesn't like you. He really, he's really down with Jesus. But Jesus did the signed, co sign for your group insurance plan, and God's, God's going you know, to. Ah, he formed me in my mother's womb. So every weird thing about me, I mean, every weird thing about you. I'm not going to preach this like it doesn't apply to you. Every weird thing about you is included in Ephesians 2, and Ephesians 2 says you are God's workmanship. I haven't given you anything to put in the chat yet this sermon, and I know I'm failing you. Just say, take it up with the workman. <laughs> I am God's handiwork, so I know I'm weird. I don't mean to be weird. But take it up with the workman. Now, the weirdest thing about your weirdness, can I say this? <laughs> Is that if you start with the belief that there's something wrong with you, you will skip past the best stuff that God has put inside of you. John, I can't say it again, I don't remember what I said. It wasn't in my notes. But but John, remember, he was so unique and he was powerful because of his uniqueness. God said he's, he's going to prepare the way for the Lord. Um, and even in his mother's womb, he recognized the presence of Jesus. You know how I know that? Verse 44. It says that the baby leaped for joy. That's why I called it jump. John was jumping around. In the presence of Jesus before he was ever born. God saw and knew and loved you before one of your days came to be. Now, you are looking at me like you believe this for somebody else, but not for you. You're looking at me like you believe this in theory, but it's a different thing in practice. The conclusions that we jump to are not derived from what we believe theoretically. They are derived from what we believe practically and personally. So I've got to get this personal. I've got to get this personal to the point that I know that God's purpose is working in my life and was working in my life. What if you started with that belief? What if you started with the belief that in your prenatal state, God was already forming you according to a purpose? What if you started with that? How different would you look to you in the mirror? How, how much less would you hate the sound of your own voice? How much less would you doubt the things that God included to be a part of your destiny? I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God said, I started this before you ever got here, 
and I will be faithful to complete it in your life. John just knew. He's jumping around in the womb because he knows he is in the presence of one who is greater. John was jumping around, kicking around. Never been pregnant before, but heard about it and watched it and read about it in the books and saw it on the movies and next to me in the bed. And Holly would say, Feel that. And I'd be like, I can't feel that. And she'd say, Can't you feel it? And I'd say, No, I can't feel it. And she'd say, Why can't she get frustrated? I can't feel it. I'm not carrying it. I'm trying to experience something from the outside that you're experiencing from the inside. So John, John is carrying this, this assignment. He's carrying this, this message, repent, you know? Repent. The kingdom of heaven is near. Repent. He kept talking. Let me show you this in the scripture, because it doesn't stop in the in the uh, in the womb for John. He goes into the wilderness. In the wilderness. From the womb to the wilderness, God's hand was on this boy. Isn't that pretty preaching, Jeppy? From the womb to the wilderness, God was with you before it got started. He's, he's with you. He was with you in the womb. He's with you in the wilderness too. But John was preaching in the wilderness. He went there by choice and he declared, "Repent! The kingdom of heaven is at hand." I got to show you this in in Matthew three verse eleven. This is part of his message. He said, "I baptize you with water for repentance, change, turn." Change, turn, right? He's preaching about repentance. But he said, After me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Who's he talking about? It's not a trick question. The answer is Jesus. J E S U S. We love Jesus. Yes, we do. We, oh, yeah, Jesus. His winnowing fork, listen to this. This is the part. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn, burning up the chaff with the unquenchable fire. Somebody shout fire. fire. John was expecting for Jesus to come with fire. Now look at this in, in John's Gospel, chapter one. I got so much scripture, I hope you're hungry. John chapter one, verse 29. The Bible says the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one. This is the one. This is the one. I meant when I said, This is the one that my spirit recognized before my frame was ever known. This is the one. Somebody shout, This is the one. Shout it in the chat. This is the one. This is the one I meant when I said, A man comes after me who has surpassed me because he was before me. Now, the conclusion that you come to is based in the belief that you start with. He's going all the way back to what he knew in his mother's womb. He's going back to that recognition that predated his cognitive ability to know that there's something that I knew before my life, before my, before my experience, before my lens of the world began to taint it. This is the one. There's something in you that has always known God was there. There's something in you that has always known that he loved you. There is something in you. How many, how many of you can testify? There has been some… Even when it was so dark and everything in you doubted, there was something in you kicking, living, beating to let you know there's a purpose for your life. This is the one. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. And then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I have seen and I testify. This is God's chosen one. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. And when he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. Look, the Lamb of God. He recognized Jesus when he came toward him. 
he came to the conclusion this is the one because he had a belief that he went back to. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream and share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.